welcome back to our youtube channel today we are going to discuss lesson number one chemical reactions and equations before learning this lesson you should know about some ionic states of elements we know that there are 118 elements out of this 118 92 elements are natural out of these 92 that is 70 are metals and approximately 22 are non-metals. Now, in the case of these metals, metals are characterized by the ability to lose electrons in order to build a positive ions. Very important, they lose electrons and they build positive ions. Whereas, in the case of this non-metal, they have their electron acceptor here it is electron donor or losing electrons or here it is electron acceptor and form negative ions so very important thing you will remember met simple we can say metals show positive ions because they are a uh, electron donor non metals show negative ion because they are acceptor so metals show positive ion non metals show negative ion now let's discuss which metal shows plus one ionic state plus two ionic state and plus three ionic state and in the case of non metals also minus one minus two and minus three there are few metals are there so plus one metal shows that is sodium potassium and silver these three elements shows the plus one ionic state so many metals are there but in the 10th standard you must learn this much only sodium shows plus one and potassium shows plus 1 and silver shows plus 1 ionic state and in the case of plus 2 why it shows plus 1 ionic state because they lose only one electron and in the case of uh, plus 2 that is uh, barium zinc magnesium calcium and lead these all metal shows plus 2 ionic state very uh, you have to be important you have to by heart it barium zinc magnesium calcium lead these element shows plus two ionic state and only one metal is there that is plus three that is aluminium plus three ionic so only one and only one it is that is aluminium shows plus three ionic state sodium potassium silver shows plus one barium zinc magnesium calcium lead shows plus two now check it out the non metals non metal shows minus one ionic state that is minus one they are minus how minus they accept one accept electrons one if they if they accept one electron they show minus one if they accept two minus two they accept three that is minus three they are showing like this way so minus one uh, non metals are fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine fluorine they am um, uh, they accept one electron they show minus chlorine minus bromine minus iodine minus so they call it as fluoride chloride ion fluoride ion chloride ion bromide ion and iodide ion so fluorine chlorine bromine iodines are belong to the halogen family so they call it as halogens very important that is in the periodic classification lesson it comes that fluorine chlorine, chlorine bromine iodines are halogens and minus two ionic state that is one uh, non metal is there that is oxygen you have, um, uh, you would, uh, to remember only one that is oxygen and minus three it is nitrogen and uh, n minus three so oxygen they form oxide ion nitrogen they form nitride ion next in the case of polyatomic these all things you studied in the ninth standard so once again we are reminding this this polyatomic ion polyatomic ion minus one uh, what is meant by polyatomic ion that is more than one atom carries a single charge that is polyatomic ion so polyatomic ion also um, uh, kind of uh, also kind of having that minus one minus two minus three like this check it out minus one oh minus one that is hydroxide and the nitrate no3 minus these two are minus one ionic state look at the more than one atom carries a single charge or hydroxide ion nitrate ion again it is there but in the tension you will remember this much and um, minus 2 means carbonate co3 minus 2 and sulfate so4 minus 2 these four non polyatomic ions you have to remember hydroxide ion nitrate ion carbonate ion and sulfate ion now in the case of iron we know that fe there is a formula iron shows two ionic state that is plus 2 and plus 3 
and one more metal is there they show two ionic side that is copper copper shows plus 1 and plus 2 what is the name of plus 2 ion that is known as ferrous ferrous o u s and a, pl a plus 3 uh, ion shows ferric r i c ferric and what about the copper it is cuprous r o u s look at that here o u s here also o u s and what about in the case of uh, copper plus 2 cupric i c so less number of ions carries o u s that is ferrous cuprous and here plus 3 ionic state that is more number of ions a cupric here this cupric look at in the case of iron iron is plus 2 and plus 3 what about copper 1 and 2 plus 1 and plus 2 next topic chemical reaction let's study about the chemical reactions oh, what is what is a chemical reaction chemical reaction is a process which one or more substances form a new substances one or more substances form a new substances and second point it cannot be reversed by the physical method what about the third point whenever a chemical change occurs we know that chemical reaction has taken place then what is actually mean by a chemical reaction and what do you know that uh, the chemical reaction has taken place let's study about these all things and uh, next one it is what is the aim of this lesson aim of this chapter is to teach different chemical reaction occurs in our environment and importance of this chapter to identify the equations for all chemical reactions let's perform the activity the first activity take a magnesium ribbon we know that magnesium ribbon the color of the magnesium ribbon is silver in color so any color changes or blackish color anything it is there what happened you have to clean it before using so clean it with a sandpaper why we have to clean with a sandpaper to remove the rust that is the answer now another thing you have to hold it with a pair of tongs like this you have to hold it with a pair of tongs this we call it as tongs and uh, burn it with a burner or a spirit lamp you have to burn it this is the burner or a spirit lamp so what do you observe the observation a white dazzling flame that is very nice to see that is a way white color dazzling that white dazzling flame and afterwards it converted into ash collect that ash that ash means the magnesium react with it is burning burning means in our chemistry react with oxygen very important thing you remember burning means what otherwise heating burning or heating means react with oxygen to form magnesium plus oxygen to form magnesium oxide this <coughs> magnesium oxide is a white color ash this white color ash you collected in a watch glass collect it and what happened you have to dissolve less quantity of water and you have to test with the whether it is an acidic or a basic in nature how we can test it so dip a blue litmus paper or a red litmus paper in this we can observe that this red litmus paper changes to blue the red changes to blue what is the meaning of that it is a base so from this we understood this magnesium oxide is basic in nature generally we call it as metal oxide magnesium is a metal metal oxide metal oxides are acidic in sorry basic in nature metal oxides are basic in nature very important metal oxides are basic in nature let's perform the equation magnesium react with oxygen gives magnesium oxide then what we added this magnesium oxide we added a water so what happened how whatever thing you mix with water it to form hydroxide so they form hydroxide MgOH twice why it become 2 here magnesium source plus 2 ionic state hydroxide is minus 1 cross multiply MgOH twice what chemical changes occurs in this reaction we can see that change in state the first chemical change we seen change in state let's perform the second activity take lead nitrate solution in a test tube so lead nitrate pbno3 twice 
why PbNO3 is come because lead shows plus 2 ionic state nitrate is minus 1 cross multiply PbNO3 twice. So, the one more thing what remember this lead nitrate is a colorless solution and you have to add potassium iodide solution in this potassium iodide that is potassium iodide Ki potassium plus 1 iodide minus 1 cross like potassium iodide and potassium iodide is also what it is a colorless solution colorless and this solution you mix it suddenly we can see that yellow precipitate yellow yellow color like this precipitate formation so uh, that yellow precipitate check, check it out what yellow precipitate lead nitrate pbno3 twice react with potassium iodide both are solution and this potassium and the nitrate for form potassium nitrate lead and iodine form lead iodide pbi2 lead iodide this lead iodide is a low precipitate and precipitate means we have to show down arrow and one more formation is there that afterwards i will tell now you study it is a down arrow that is precipitate here it is lead iodide is a low precipitate and potassium nitrate potassium nitrate is a colorless solution that is float here that is float here like this so lead iodide is an yellow precipitate sudden formation immediate formation is yellow iodide so from this activity what you study here we studied that formation of precipitate there's a white precipitate is there yellow precipitate is there here it is yellow precipitate that is formation of precipitate and another one it is change in color that is the, the second one uh, colorless solution changes to yellow color that means change in color And third one, what is a formation of precipitate? Let's study the third activity. Take a few granules, that is zinc granules, uh, in a conical flask. Otherwise, you can use in a test tube you have to add some few granules zinc granules zinc is also a silver in color magnesium also a silver in color color you remember it they are asking the mcq questions so questions will come the zinc granule this one zinc granules now you add dilute hydrochloric acid this is dilute hydrochloric acid then what do you observe here we can see that so, so many high bubbles are coming like this bubbles are coming upward Up, bubbles are coming upward means that we call it as evolution of gas then afterwards you go and touch the base of the beaker it's why uh, um, any changes in the temperature yes it's very hot so another change what we see in change in temperature change in temperature so from this uh, reaction what changes we see in evolution of gas gases are coming up so we call it as evolution evolution of gas and change in temperature let's check the equation zinc granules zinc is silver in color and react with the dilute hcl that zinc and chlorine they form zinc chloride this zinc chloride is blackish color so a silver color afterwards we can see blackish color like this so zinc zinc chloride is black that is a salt plus what is remaining here hydrogen so hydrogen is remaining that is hydrogen gas is coming upward that means evolution evolution shows up arrow i already explained that uh, precipitate precipitate means pbi2 what did you show down arrow evolution of gas means up arrow. remember it down arrow and up arrow so another two changes we studied here evolution of gas and fifth one change in temperature from the above three activities the following observations are determined whether the chemical reaction has taken place what are the changes taken place change in state change in color formation of precipitate evolution of gas change in temperature this we call it as characteristics of a chemical reactions one question come that is what are the characteristics of a chemical reaction there are five characteristics change in state change in color formation of precipitate evolution of gas change in temperature second part of this lesson that is chemical equation 
explained in the first activity when a magnesium is burnt in oxygen and it converted into magnesium oxide this description of a chemical in the sentence form is quite long that means magnesium react with oxygen to form magnesium oxide in the sentence form it is quite long so it can be written in a shortened form the word equations for the above reaction look at that reaction magnesium react with oxygen to form magnesium oxide this is the word form so the substance that undergo a chemical change in the reaction that is magnesium and oxygen we are call it as reactants i am going to writing in a symbol, symbolic representation that is magnesium react with oxygen gives magnesium oxide so this part uh, we call it as reactant and new substance that is magnesium oxide form during this reaction that we call it as product and look the word equation shows the changes in the reactants and products through an arrow mark this arrow mark is placed between reactant and product the reactants are written on the left hand side that is lhs with positive sign between them similarly the products are written on the right hand side that is rhs with a positive sign and uh, more than one product if you are mentioning as positive sign between them and what about this arrow mark the arrow head point shows the direction of the reaction in which direction the reaction happened that is the direction of reaction next we are going to learn that writing a chemical equation chemical equation can be made why we are writing a chemical equation so chemical equation can be made more concise c o n c i s e that is more concise and useful that is the reason why we are using the chemical equation so chemical equation can be made more concise and useful chemical equation represents a chemical reaction let us recall this formula of magnesium oxygen and magnesium oxide here count and compare the number of atoms of each element on the lhs and rhs of this arrow mark now the number of atoms of each element is same that is you know, on the both side so if we uh, no problem at all but if not then the equation is unbalanced look at this here magnesium one magnesium in the reactant side and product side also one magnesium look at the case of oxygen here oxygen is two oxygen that is o2 is two here is one so what about this this equation is known as unbalanced equation so mass is not same on both side so in this such equation that such chemical equations we call it as skeletal equation so unbalanced chemical equation is known as skeletal equation now why should we balance this equation because to satisfy law of conservation of mass very important why should we balance the equation to satisfy the law of conservation of mass you already studied one law in ninth standard that is mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reactions in this case here that means the total mass of the element present in the product of a chemical reaction has be equal to the total mass of the elements present in the reactants that is the law of conservation of mass the number of atoms of each element look at here the number of atoms of each element remain same before and after the chemical reaction hence we need to balance the skeletal chemical equation let's learn about the balancing chemical equation step by step in uh, that method is known as heat and trial method first step to balance the chemical equation first draw boxes around this formula like this you have to draw boxes and second step 
list the number of atoms of different elements present in the unbalanced equation so which are the elements only elements we need don't write o2 only elements and uh, you have to list it that is lhs that is reactants and uh, rhs that is product side lhs and list like this how many atoms are there in the um, lhs side of magnesium magnesium one and oxygen here two what about rhs magnesium one oxygen also one we have to may, uh, balance it both side so writing symbols uh, look at this here uh, here we have to convert into two so that's why we put it the box so we have no rights to put two over here so put on the left side so what happened to this magnesium magnesium also converted to two that is multiply one into two is equal to two and oxygen also two look at this uh, lhs side magnesium it's one only so put two in the uh, left side so it also look two 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 that uh, this equation is balanced second equation that is hydrogen plus chlorine gives hydrochloric acid again write down the elements present here like we put make it as box lhs rhs otherwise you can write it as reactants and product what about hydrogen in the left uh, lhs side two hydrogen and what about chlorine two chlorine and check it out the uh, product side hydrogen one chlorine one so what you have to do you have to first you make it a box like this so directly you know that put two over here completely they change to uh, two two so one into two two and chlorine also goes to two directly balance simple equations now i am going to showing them uh, some difficult equation there is a third equation sodium hydroxide react with the sulfuric acid gives sodium sulfate plus water now first step you make it as box like this now which are the elements present here sodium oxygen hydrogen hy hy hydrogen already written now it is sulfur oxygen we already written there now yes any other elements no it's over now check uh, we have to make it as lhs and rhs check how many sodium is there in lhs side one oxygen here plus sign here two oxygens are there so count it one oxygen here and four oxygen here one plus four that is five total five and in the case of hydrogen also one hydrogen here one plus two that is three hydrogen and sulfur one only and look at the rhs side sodium two sulfur one where is sulfur you put there only oxygen four plus one five oxygen five and hydrogen two so check, check it out sodium is not balanced and oxygen is okay and what about the hydrogen hydrogen three and two so sodium and hydrogen is not balanced here so yeah, we have to check it that one put Two over in the LHS side, RHS two over LHS one. So you have to make it as two over here. So sodium goes to two, and oxygen here two two plus four. What about this oxygen? It converted to six like this, and hydrogen here also hydrogen two. It is changed to two two plus this two over there two plus two four. Now again. The unbalanced here. You have to balance it. Where hydrogen and oxygen we need to balance. So hydrogen you have to convert into four. So here already two is there. You have to convert into four means multiply with the two. Two into two, four. Hydrogen change. And what about oxygen? Oxygen two. Two plus four, six. Now check it out. Two two six six four four one one. The equation is balanced. This is the way you have to balance the equation. Now look at the fourth equation. FeSO4 gives Fe2O3 plus SO2 plus SO3. First, you make it as box. So, which are the elements? Mention it. Fe, sulfur, oxygen. Any other elements? No. So, this much only. 
LHS, RHS. Iron. How many ion is there in the LHS side? 1. Sulfur 1. Oxygen 4. Here iron 2. What about oxygen? So many oxygen are there in the product side. So count it. 3 plus 2, 5. 5 plus 3, 8. So oxygen goes to 8. And sulfur 1 plus 1, 2. Look at it is a double of this one. RHS side we can see the double. So directly what you have to put? Put 2 over there. That is also kind of a double. Iron goes to 2. Sulfur 2. And oxygen 4 into 2. 8. Simple way you have to balance it. Next we have to mention the physical state. To make a chemical equation more informative. The physical states of the reactants and products are mentioned along with the chemical formula. Now look at what are the physical state. If the gaseous state we have to mention as G and in the case of liquid it is L and aqueous that is we have to write AQ and in the case of solid we have to write as S. The Look at ga gases means we know that hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, sulfur dioxide gas, chlorine gas, these all gases we have to mention as G. In the case of liquid, we have to remember only water comes in the liquid form. But rest of the things are aqueous. What is the meaning of aqueous? That aqueous means solid mixed with the water. That is aqueous. Whatever solid, that means sodium hydroxide, sodium chloride, these are all solid. You have to mix it with that water to convert it to aqueous. And one more thing you have to remember that is all acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, these are all in aqueous state. So don't, uh, don't be confused about this one. Only water comes in the liquid form. The rest of the things are aqueous except solid form. Solid, solid we have to mention as uh, yes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, aluminum, these are all in the solid form. Check it out the equation. Magnesium react with oxygen gives magnesium oxide. We know that magnesium ribbon we taken. So in which state? Solid like this you have to write. Oxygen is a gas. So we have to represent it as G and magnesium oxide. We know that is converted to powder form. So that is also a solid form. Like this we have to mention this physical states of uh, this equation. Another one uh, we have to mention hydrogen plus nitrogen gives ammonia. NS3 is the ammonia gas. So what is hydrogen is a gas. Nitrogen is also a gas, ammonia is also a gas. Like this you have to mention these equations.